Oh, mine was pretty non-committal about how many programming languages there are. It might be somewhere between 200 or 8,000 or something. Um, but generally, like the programming languages that fall into use are based on like the ease of problem solving and the libraries that they're, they have available to them and they kind of fall into popular use. Um, but I was kind of interested in ones that are really, really unuseful and really, really <laughs> unpopular. Um, and that's basically the idea of like esoteric languages. Um, they're basically made to push the limits of what coding and coding languages can like look like. Um, and generally, the idea of them is that they're really useless unless you know exactly what's going on and you can't really read them. Um, so I found one of these languages and it's called PA, um, after the artist. Um, and its, its code runs in blocks of color code. Um, so here's an example of what a factorial program would look like um, in PA. Um, so it uses 20 specific colors as its building blocks. Um, and it reads from the top left clockwise. Um, <laughs> um, but the meanings aren't in the colors themselves. It's actually like from block to block. Um, the meaning comes from how many shades or hues different it is. <laughs> yeah. So, so this is basically what it looks like. So like, um, if you had a red block and then, um, is it, I think it's a light green block. Yeah, light green block. That would be two hues and then two darker, but it's just two brightness darker. So that would become not, which is like the exclamation mark bang. Yeah, uh, um, which is a bit mental. Um, and because you can't actually put in text or numbers or anything in, it's just color, you have to add in numbers into your code by just having like a huge chunk of like 10 red blocks and then, put, and then do the command for in number after it. So if you want to do 100 plus 100, it gets a bit mental. Um, for processing as well. And then if you even want to do um, letters, you'd have to use in and out char and have to use their Unicode characters. So you'd start using 90 blocks. Um, so I think this is what, if I can get it over, this is what a Hello, Pro, Hello World program would look like. <laughs> um, so yeah, like I said, it, it reads clockwise. Um, but that until it either meets um, block meaning that either um, blocks the flow of program reading or like actually restricts it. Um, so in this one, you see where that black thing with the green is? That's like the end of the program because um, it will be directed into there and then it will keep trying to change direction and the black will restrict it. Um, <laughs> so it all, what happens is that it goes in and it tries that direction and then it will try and change direction and then it's blocked that way and basically it will have eight attempts and then after that it'll be like, okay, yeah, I'm done. Like there's, there's, just, there's just nowhere to go, which I think is why it's eight um, black blocks. And then the green blocks on this um, are what actually make it change direction, um, like change the flow. So if I can get it over. So that would just be an infinite loop. Like that's, that's not going anywhere because it can't end. Um, so, and the green flow changing blocks can kind of be used either as like a while loop or an if statement. So this one is an even odd function um, and it will keep going, it will go across the top, then go down. And then if it's odd, no, if it, yeah, if it's odd, it will keep going, but if it's even, it will, and it, so it will go down to the bottom and then finish. But then if it's um, even, it will go that, that way. Was it the way around? Hard to read. I, th I think it's down. <laughs> <laughs> down is even, and then that way is odd. Um, and then it will finish in either direction. So that's more like how it works as an if statement. But then this would be a countdown where it just keeps going round and round and like decrementing it one every time until that last little block with um, just a few colors at the end there, that's like an if zero 
statement and then it could finish, but it's just a while, it's not zero, and then it can finish. Um, and so the reason that you need like these black and green blocks to like direct the flow is that with the white space all around it, it's kind of a free for all. As long as it's in that direction, it will read it um, and it will like kind of just fan out. Um, so if it goes from like the top left to there, it will read everything, but there's nothing there to read. So it will just wait until the next block of color comes along. Um, but because of that, um, you can, like the idea of it being PA as an artist is that you can paint in the white space as long as you have black blocks to like stop the program being, like reading the wrong thing. Um, so this, hold on. So this is like a normal is prime function, but to like, yeah. <laughs> um, but to like explore the artsy side of it, this is another <laughs> is prime function. <laughs> and all the black is just like stopping it reading the wrong thing. And then you can just play around in the white space. Um, and then that's pretty much it. But I will leave you with um, Tom Boothby's comment that the pastel colors weren't readable out of all of this. So he made a Hello World program that didn't use any pastels. That was what he took from that. Pastels aren't readable. Okay, that's it.